If you haven't heard already, superintendents are being paid a half a million dollars. But why isn't this chunk of money being used towards the staff or just education in general? Hello everyone, it's Jay. And let's talk about the pay of highly qualified board members of education in Texas who are getting large chunks of cash and even payouts for cars in the name of textbooks. Top of sizable salaries, local superintendents are getting big allowances for cars, digital devices, and home offices. One gets a bonus just for staying in his job. Another district pays for its superintendent to be visited by a professional development coach. This video will be a little controversial, but I find it extremely interesting that it's kind of been hidden. It's not really there out in the public like it should be. And my goal with this video is to really shed some light on everything that I've seen with the educational system and just the fact that money is not being used correctly. Sean Micah, who makes $297,000 a year, plus a $1,500 a month car allowance and another $250 a month for mobile devices and internet. Now, I find it a little insane that previous generations like Gen X or Millennials, aka my generation, hi, hello, are claiming that newer generations are lacking textbook education when you have staff of the educational system taking advantage of the allocation of money and using it on themselves. A lot of these claims stem from iPads and tablets being used in classrooms rooms today. So they're very aware of the numbers, but I think there hasn't been a lot of action taken on combating the teacher shortage, uh, especially in the most recent legislative session. A lot of the proposals that would have, you know, for example, raised teacher pay, um, bolstered uh, training programs and, and given money for that, um, those didn't make it across the finish line. But if you remember a time whenever we had the laptop cart and for some reason you always got stuck with the laptop that was missing keys because all the other kids race to get the best one, then a piece of technology is nothing new in the classroom. By the way, I'm calling you out, John. Laptop 23 was freaking mine. <laughs> you could say that technology has been in the classroom since the late 70s, and that's something that people need to really think about whenever they judge in your generations with the use of iPads and tablets. I mean, does anybody remember that one video on internet safety from the 90s. Not only do they play the typical computer games that all the kids enjoy, but their curiosity for learning has skyrocketed. Peter is constantly quoting sports statistics and he can tell you the best surfing spots around the globe. <laughs> but going back to the main topic of the video, did anybody really ask for this payout? I mean, with money like this, it is no wonder why teachers feel so underpaid. 500,000 to this superintendent, 300,000 to our local superintendent here in San Angelo, and not to mention the payouts for cars. On top of his $324,000 salary, and $750 a month car allowance, he receives $200 a month to use for home office equipment or for personal purposes. The district will also pay airfare and lodging for a professional development coach named Thomas Randall to travel to San Antonio three times a year to train and guide the superintendent. So what does this do to taxpayer dollars of each county? Well, you see, the more money that you put in on your taxes, the more it's going to the superintendent. <laughs> the more that the superintendent asks for more money, the more your property taxes will go up with taxpayer money being allocated to education. One might think that this money is being well spent and our future generations are getting better education. By looking at these numbers, not enough money could really teach these superintendents how to manage a student, let alone a classroom. It's just insane. Which is why I believe that a lot of this money should go to the actual teachers in the classroom teaching the students. In a study by the American Psychological Association, 14% of teachers reported having been physically attacked by a student. My last year teaching, I had been out on leave twice for being attacked by students. 
one I had six months of physical therapy for. I still wanted to be there. I still wanted to be with those kids. I still want to be with them today. And look, this video isn't to bash the educational system. If anything, I would love to see more books and more technology in classrooms. When you have certain politicians trying to ban books and educational staff taking advantage of taxpayer money, I'm gonna at least shed some freaking light on this thing. What I found to be odd about these overpaid superintendents is how fast it has disappeared from the mainstream. It is insane that the majority of the articles that were written about this topic have essentially just disappeared from the limelight. And that makes me a little skeptical on why this isn't a bigger story. Most local school districts post the superintendent's contract somewhere on their website, but they're not always easy to find. Especially in these times whenever education is more important than ever. So it had me thinking, is it only Texas that gets higher payouts? Or is this happening around the US? I took to the internet and I took to the most unaffordable place in America, LA. All right, you are taking a live look at the second most expensive city in the US. And yes, not only do we rank second full rounds, Los Angeles also comes in second place for cities taking the biggest chunk out of your wallet. That is according to a new survey by US News and World Report. And one might be thinking, okay, Texas has a pretty high salary for superintendents. What about Los Angeles? You know, one of the most expensive pieces of land to live on? Well, this is interesting. Are they only getting paid 100 to 200K a year? And yet Texas is being paid $500,000 a year? That doesn't make any sense. And then that brings more thoughts as to why is Texas being used in this way? When looking into this, even further, it stems from a superintendent's perk package. And these perk packages create a demand for more superintendents, but it also relies on their educational background and how they manage a certain district. Lawmakers to fund a significant increase in overall teacher salaries reduce the cost of health care insurance for teachers and offer incentives for special education and bilingual education teachers who are in greatest demand. They are teachers in some of our districts that finish teaching our kids and they put them at Walmart Youth or that you work for UPA. Don't get me wrong, some of this also stems from a political atmosphere, of course, but not always. However, that still doesn't answer the question. Why are superintendent salaries so high in Texas? Digging even further in the internet, some are saying there is no rhyme or reason to this. It's just a perk of being a superintendent and they're also taking advantage of taxpayer dollars. Others are saying it is a necessity to create a better educational system in districts that education is pretty much lacking things that are the drawbacks. Money. They can't survive. They can't survive on what it, what they're getting paid and the retirement when they retire. Like, I know you know this. I'm, I'm, I'm retired and I laughed at what I was going to get from my retirement. Like, I literally burst out laughing. But if you want my opinion, this money could really be used to give teachers proper funds to continue the urge to educate. With higher pay towards teaching a class of students will bring a higher demand of wanting to educate. But that is just my opinion. Now, again, I figured I would shed some light on this topic because it is very interesting that superintendents are being paid this high amount and they're kind of just in the background. Meanwhile, you have teachers teaching classrooms full of students of about 30 to 40 kids and they're not being paid a fair wage to do so. On top of that, kids can be a difficult situation to deal with. And especially if you're not their legal guardian and you're just somebody who is a teacher, do you really want to be involved in trying to make the student better if they're acting out whenever you're getting paid nothing but potatoes? With that being said, however, let me know what you think in the comments, like, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.